you switch on, look, that's the switch for the mic. A pleasant good afternoon to everyone. We are about to begin today's service. I would like to specially welcome our distinguished guest in our presence. I notice Honorable Ron Redhead. Welcome, sir. I would also like to welcome the principal of the Presentation Brothers College, Mr. Dominic Jeremiah, and all other distinguished guests in our presence today. I thank you all for coming today to celebrate the life of Jason Nicole Joseph. There are no words to express the mixture of feelings that exist within us since his sudden passing. We are indeed grateful for your love, kindness, support, and presence in this difficult time. I am Chenille Daniel Frederick, the cousin of Jason. We commence today's Thanksgiving celebration with tributes in, order, in honor sorry, of Jason Joseph. At this time, I would like to welcome representatives from the Inland Revenue Department, Ministry of Finance, where Jason worked for 23 years. At this time, I would just welcome the representatives come in to do the tribute. Good afternoon to everybody. Good afternoon to everybody. Indeed, this is a day that the Lord has made. Yes, and be glad in it. Uh, before I give the tribute, allow me please to apologize for the absence of our Minister for Finance and our PS for the Ministry of Finance. Uh, due to other commitments at this time, they cannot be here physically with us. But I assure you that they will join in um, virtually. Our brother, we are here to celebrate your life and the measure of its worth. 
and every single life you touched while you were here on this earth. We wish to pay our last respects. That's why we are all here, to thank you for your friendship and all the memories that we hold dear. It's been a privilege to have known you. We were like family, not just co-workers. And we will carry you in spirit until we meet up once again. Kind, courteous, compassionate, intelligent, willing, fun-loving, pleasant. These are just some of the adjectives that we can use to describe our co-worker and friend, Jason Joseph. In whatever role we knew him, from whatever vantage point, he stood apart as someone very special. Although seemed very reserved and quiet at times, for those of us who knew him well, we often shared small jokes and belly laughs. We can recall several times on the corridors of the Ministry of Finance, himself and Mr. Mullins, former co-worker and his good friend, sharing conversations and exchanging in some light moments. Jason was always willing to lend a helping hand. Jason was always willing to lend a helping hand. Whether it was shifting a desk, carrying water from one floor to the next, helping Bambi, who was like a big brother to him. He was always willing to go beyond the call of duty. His most memorable act of compassion was demonstrated when he voluntarily assisted Ms. Rhonda Jones, a former co-worker of the IRD. Although at work, her mobility was greatly impaired. Hence, she needed assistance to get certain tasks done. Guess what? Jason was indeed a guy to help her out. Jason, the staff of the IRD will always remember our small talks, your laughter and your bright smile. That bright smile that illuminated whenever we spoke about your son Craig and his successes and achievements. Jason, in life, we loved you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you but you did not go alone. For part of us went with you. That day, God called you home. You left us beautiful memories, beautiful memories. Your passion is still our guide. And though we cannot walk with you no more, you are always at our side. Our friendship chain may be broken, and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us one by one, that chain, that chain will certainly link again. To the immediate family members and close friends of Jason, while the team at IRD mourns with you, given his passing, today we stand to celebrate the life that he led and the contributions he made in service to the IRD and to the people of Grenada. May his soul rest in eternal peace.
I thank you, representatives from the Ministry of Finance, for your kind words and beautiful renditions. At this time, we will have a tribute from the Presentation Brothers College. Jason is a past student of the Presentation Brothers College, and he graduated in, the, in 1996, class of 1996. I am not sure who the person is, but I'll welcome. I see Mr. Jeremiah coming. Welcome, Mr. Jeremiah. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I come here this evening with mixed emotions. Um, for those of you who don't know, since January, we have had to attend funerals. We have had probably four or five of our past students in the prime uh, passing away. 
And so when I received the news of Jason's funeral uh, of death, I was, I was deeply, deeply, deeply saddened. Just having come from the funeral of Asha McIntyre. So on behalf of the board of management, the PTA executive, the past students, especially the class of 1996, who are here in their numbers, the staff, the students of Presentation Brothers College. I want to express our deepest condolences to Jason's family, his parents, his brothers and sister, his son, and the rest of the family on Jason's untimely passing. Since we received the sad news of his tragic death, the school community has kept you all in our thoughts and in our prayers. You were part of our daily assemblies. We remembered you whenever we had any activity. I had the special privilege of being Jason's English A and English B literature teacher while he was at Presentation Brothers College. And there's a lot that I can say. <laughs> but I'm going to confine what I want to say just to a few brief remarks. And during his, this period as his teacher, I got to know Jason very well. Despite his quiet nature and demeanor, he had a profound depth of literary insight. And while I was preparing for this, I remember some of the novels we were studying at the time and the way in which Jason contributed to the conversation. So apart from his depth of literary insight, he had a calm way of articulating what he thought was the relevant themes and ideas coming out of the text. He was always searching for the redeeming or damning qualities in the characters that we were studying at the time. So we, exper we experienced him to be a thoughtful, tenacious, respectful, and honest person a great human being. And despite all the challenges that Jason had to navigate during his latter years, they did not take away from his simplicity, his depth of reflection, and openness about his own struggles. His periodic visit to my office just to chat were always punctuated with laughter and pleasant memories of his experience at Presentation Brothers College. He was always optimistic that everything would be all right in the long run. He treasured the love and support of his family. And his greatest pride was his son Craig, whom he told everyone about about his successes and about his progress and about who we are all, whom we are also very proud. So the presence of his classmates here today, and I invite them to stand, all those who were in Jason's class, just stand. And there are the rest of them participated in the celebration today online. So the presence of his classmates here today is a testimony of the way in which they held him in high regard and the bonds of brotherhood that they shared. Just this weekend, I was having a conversation with one of the past students in New York, and he reminded me that Jason was the first class prefect of this particular class. I didn't remember that. A job which he executed 
without fear or favor. Jason was loved within the PBC community, but he too exhibited a lot of love for his alma mater and always did everything within his power to ensure that he supported the school and that he was present at many of our events. He shared fondly about his formative experience at the school. And so as we come to say farewell to Jason, we do so with mixed emotions, sad that he had to leave us so soon and so tragically, but happy that he's returning to his maker, the Lord who gave him life, who brought him into this world, the joy and happiness that he brought to his family as a young man growing up, sharing in all the rites of passage in his life. So today we celebrate his life. We remember him. We are grateful that Jason was a part of our school community and touched the lives of so many of his brothers. So we let him go to his maker and we pray that his soul would rest in perfect peace. Thank you, Mr. Jeremiah, for your in-depth reflection of Jason. At this time, I will welcome a representative from the class of 1996 to read a tribute from Chevron Barker. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are you hearing me? I am very soft-spoken. So for those of you all who know me, you all know this is really out of my character. <laughs> Firstly, I'm going to read a tribute sent from Chevron Barker, one of his lifelong friends. They went to Vendom RC together, entered PBC in 1991, and graduated in 1996. As I begin, it is with a heavy heart and a profound sense of sorrow I share these words of remembrance on this solemn occasion. It is with deep regret and sadness that circumstances beyond my control prevent me from being here in person to mourn the loss of my dear friend. Please accept my deepest apology for not being able to stand be beside you during this time of challenge and grief. The news of Jason's passing has left me utterly devastated, and I find myself grappling with mixed emotions, something our past English teacher and principal articulated. It fills me with deep regret and profound sadness that I cannot be present here today to offer my support and share in the collective sorrow we all feel. However, I take solace in seeing how quickly the brothers from class of 96 have come together in solidarity, showing love and support for one another. Losing someone as special as Jason is, hard, is a heartbreaking experience, and my heart mourns alongside each and every one of you. Jason was not merely a friend, but a cherished presence in my life, from primary school representing Vendom RC in quizzes to during our secondary school years at PBC, a bond formed and tran that transcended time and distance. His infectious laughter, genuine kindness, and unwavering loyalty touched my heart in ways that words cannot express. The void left by his absence is profound and can never be filled. As I reflect on the memories I shared with Jason, I am reminded of his vibrant spirit, his unwavering support, 
and profound impact he had on my life. He was not just a friend, but a confidant, a source of strength, and a constant pillar of support. His presence enriched my life in countless ways, and the void left behind is a testament of his irreplaceable role in my life. Jason possessed a remarkable ability to bring joy to even the most challenging situation. His, infec his infectious enthusiasm, com compassionate nature, and willingness to lend a helping hand were qualities that made him a true friend in the sense of the word. We hear the same articulated by Mr. Randy Cadet in his tribute. He inspired, me in, he inspired me to embrace life fully, to cherish moments we have, and to celebrate the bonds of friendship that shape our lives. To you and your entire family and loved ones, please accept my sincerest condolences. My heart goes out to you in this time of immense grief and loss. I cannot begin to fathom the depth of your pain. I deeply wish I could be there to offer you comfort and support. Please know that you are in my thoughts and prayers and that I hold you close in my heart during this challenging time. In the days, weeks, and months ahead, may we find solace in the cherished memories we hold dear. Let us draw strength from the love Jason showered upon us and strive to honor his memory by embodying the kindness, compassion, and zest for life that defined him. Though I cannot be present, please know that my brotherly love for Jason and support for each of you transcends the physical distance between us. As we bid farewell to our dear friend, let us find solace in the fact that Jason's spirit will forever live on within us. May, he, may his memory serve as a guiding light, reminding us to cherish each moment, to hold on to our connection with one another, and to never take for granted the precious gift of friendship, love, and life. I will carry Jason in my heart, always. I will forever be grateful for the time we shared together. Please accept my deepest condolences, and may we find com comfort in the knowledge that we are not alone in our grief and love. Together, let us support one another and honor the beautiful life that Jason lived. Now, I want to add some additional words here. As mentioned by Mr. Jeremiah, Jason was an avid reader. And if you were in class with him, sometimes you would wonder if he was telling you something good or bad. Because his vocabulary was so great that you would have to go and drink your dictionary to figure out what he said. So there are three words I want to share with you. Two from memories of class time, and one in looking back at the life and times of Jason Nicole Joseph. First is consensus. Mr. Jeremiah, I think you might like these two. I remember in English class we were doing English mechanics, and the topic of the day was redundancy. The teacher read a sentence which included the phrase, general consensus. Jason snickered loud enough to draw the attention of the teacher. When asked what was the joke, he was able to state, a consensus is a general agreement, and there is no need to add the word general in front of it. <laughs> From our graduates, we have persons in varying walks of life. However, the consensus among us all is that Jason was one of the best and brightest in our class. The second is procrastinate. In English B class, we are reading A Raisin in the Sun or Chrysalids, John Wyndham. I think it might be Chrysalids because the teacher who was in charge of the class on that day is sitting right here with us. <laughs> in reading, we came upon the word procrastinate. Without warning, the teacher asked, Jason, what does the word procrastinate mean? because the reader was stumbling. I dare not say who the reader was. <laughs> All I know, he's in the room. Without hesitation, he was able to provide the meaning of the word procrastinate. I draw the parallel of the word procrastinate to the moment, to the, the word procrastinate and the moments lost as a result of our procrastination to the story of the photographer who was on a, on, was on a safari in search of a perfect sunset photo. Without warning, a pack of wild dogs appeared. The guide said to him, you are a very lucky man. These dogs, you are a very lucky man to see these dogs. The photographer said, it does not matter. All that matters is the sunset photo. The guide replied, they're endangered species. 
They only hunt at sunset. They eat their prey live. Very few get to see them, and even fewer live to tell the tale. The photographer said, no, it does not matter. Sunset photo, that's all that matters. In a puff of dust, the dogs disappeared. And before the photographer knew it, the sun had started to set. He had lost both opportunities. One, to, photo to take photos of this rare species of dogs and to get his sunset photos. For the, for the photographer, darkness came too soon. He was unable to seize the opportunity and allowed a precious moment to slip away. So too, we allow precious moments to slip away due to our procrastination. The next is the word spore. The word spore comes from the African, the South African language, Africans. It means track or drag mark. If you look at the spore of Jason's life, we'll see a man that journeyed through varying terrain, striving for better, at times traveling a, a difficult route over hills and valleys, but through it all, he was determined, resolute, steadfast, tenacious, pur purposeful, adamant to strive for better in himself and to help others where possible, and to share a smile in his famous Jason style. You'll see times where he walked, times where he ran, times where Times where he was. He was down on his knees. He had the temerity, the unmitigated gall, to put his hands on the ground and stand up. From the stumbles and continued along life's road. You see a man that never gave up, although there was many opportunities for him too. A man that loved and cherished his family and friends. There's an African proverb that originated from the Zulu tribe in South Africa, Ubuntu. Lucy translated it means, I am because we are, or humanity towards others. It is a philosophy that emphasizes the importance of community and human relationships. It means that we are all connected and our actions affect others around us. It urges us to love each other and seek humanity within. From the tunnel here, I can see that Jason was, be Jason was because of you all and the spoor that Jason left has positively affected the lives of us all here in attendance and beyond. The consensus now is that Jason was one of the loved, loving, toughest, bravest among us. Let us no longer procrastinate to share moments with each other, with our friends and families. Remember, darkness came too soon for the photographer. Darkness comes too soon for us all. To the family of Jason Nicole Joseph, born March 28, 1980, my date of birth, please accept. Our deepest and sincerest condolences. Thank you. To the class of 1996, I say thank you for your vivid memories of Jason, and he has no doubt touched the lives of all of us. At this time, I welcome our past teacher at the Vendor Morrissey School, Mr. Wade Phillip, to bless our hearts with a lovely rendition. Good afternoon. I have sung in many funerals, but today is one of my saddest moments. I will try my best to see if I can get through.
When I'm down and all oh, my soul so weary, when troubles come and my heart burden be, then I'm still and wait here in the silence until he come and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up. To more than I can be. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. Raise me up to more than I can be. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders, you raise me up to more than I can be. You raise me up to more than I can be. Mr. Philip, for your lovely singing, just as I remembered it. At this time, I will welcome Miss Richelle Chase. Is Richelle here? Richelle is the grandniece of Jason. And good evening, good afternoon, everyone. You call me out upon the wall. The great unknown, but feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery where oceans deep, my faith will smell. And I will call upon your And keep my eyes above the waves Where oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine oh. Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, I've never failed, and you won't stop now. So I will call 
singing. At this time, I invite Mrs. Dale Lessie, the sister of Jason, to present the eulogy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As an uncle of Jason, I had to say a few words on this very sad occasion. Shakespeare, the great peer, I wrote. Cowards die many times before the deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. Of all the wonders I have seen, it seems so strange that men should fear a thing as death, for it is a necessary end. In another play he wrote, life is a stage and we are the actors. And different people have different roles to play at different times. And each of us have our entrance and exits. Jason has played his role in the game of life. And though he died prematurely, he left us behind to take our respective roles later. A famous hymn I love to sing says, Bless me the ties that bind our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like the heaven above. Before our Father's throne, we bring our ardent praise. Our joys, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our cares. We bear each other's woes, our mutual burdens bear. And often for each other's flows, 
a sympathizing tea. When we are sound apart, it brings an inward pain. But we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. And I'll end by using the antiphon of one of our funerals, of one of the parts of our funeral rites. Jesus, the saints and angels lead you on, escorting you where Christ has gone. Now he has bid you come within, who sits amid the seraphim. Come to the feast of Abraham and to the supper of the Lamb. Come to the haven of the bliss and to perpetual light and rest. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank everyone for coming and I thank you for listening. Thank you. A son, a brother, a father, an uncle, a nephew, a friend, a confidant, a co-worker. These were some of the titles he held. Jason Nicole Joseph was born on Friday, March 28, 1980, to Altheus and Josephine Maureen Joseph. He was my little brother. As a child, he loved reading and singing. He had a very quiet personality. He started his primary education at the Vandermarcy School, now called Nativity Catholic School. He was very intelligent and a quick learner. He loved learning and was a high achiever who placed 13th on the island in common entrance examination and put Vandam School on the map. He was then assigned to PBC. At PBC, he excelled and made many lifetime friends and brothers. He spoke highly of the principal teachers and parents, Chevan Baca, Jason Benoit, Nilon Bell, Nilon, the you rest in peace, were among the, the his brothers at the school, Chevron being his protector to ensure that he was always safe. He successfully completed his secondary education and was part of the graduating class of 1996. Jason and the brothers in his class formed a bond throughout the years that lasted a lifetime. Jason was very kind-hearted, helpful, honest, among other qualities which were all mentioned before. He had a great sense of humor and enjoyed a good joke. As family, he was very confidential. He would know something and he would never spill it to another person. The famous joke, we broke mom lamp. Up to this day, she has never known who broke her lamb. He never spoke. On his passing, my sister Patty asked, Dale, you can tell me now who broke the lamb. And I said, it took Jason, to the it, Jason took it to the grave, and I too will take it to the grave. <laughs> and I surely will. <laughs> he knew what to say and what to keep. However, this did not take away from his smart mouth. He was very good at giving sharp answers, which could leave one thinking because of the words he used. He rarely knew how to get you thinking. As a young man, he enjoyed socializing with his friends and even hanging out by himself. He moved business-like very quickly, assisting others who called on him. He loved reading the Bible, and we believe that he read the whole Bible. He also enjoyed reggae music. Jason had an only son, Craig Jason Joseph, the apple of his eyes, whom he was very proud of. Jason was a people person, but a loner in many ways. He enjoyed being alone, just quiet most of the time. Everyone who knew him witnessed that. He would say, I am breezing out. 
he didn't really need much company to have a good time. We left for work together on Thursday, May 11th. Jason, my son Dane, and myself. We chatted along the way as usual. Everybody went to work, not imagining, no imagination at all as to the horrific ending that would come to him. He returned from work and came home, ran errands from his parents, and he told his parents good night, see you tomorrow, please God, and that was it. His tomorrow is not on earth anymore. He was taken from us, but his spirit lives on. We know he was a peaceful soul, and God has him in the palm of his hands. Jesus knows how we feel, and he has given me the courage to stand here. Jason, we love you, and we miss you. Goodbye, brother. I thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of the entire Joseph family, please accept our deepest thanks for your support and kindness. Thank you for attending Jason's funeral. It means so much to us to see you here. To Jason's colleagues at the Ministry of Finance, thank you for your visits and words of encouragement and support. PBC class of 1996, you have truly demonstrated what brotherhood is all about, and we appreciate your support during this difficult time in our lives. To the Vendom community, thank you for organizing the candlelight vigil and the support given in our time of bereavement. <laughs> Father Sean, Honorable Ron Redhead, family members, relatives, friends, neighbors, those who did the lovely tributes today, and everyone who supported in any way, we appreciate the compassion you showed our family and community at this very difficult time. Thank you. At this time, I welcome the principal celebrant, Father Sean Dalgard, for the funeral.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Jason died with Christ, and rose with him in new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. And the water with which we sprinkle the coffin is a reminder to us of the water of baptism. Jason was born again of water and the Holy Spirit as a child of God. signifying his dignity as a child of God. And now the family members will place the paw on the coffin, that cloth covering, as a reminder that even in death, our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. In life, Jason cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. The Bible is based on the gospel. And in baptism, Jason received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. And now we sing our entrance hymn as we escort the body of our brother forward to the earth.
journey he led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we listen to the word of God. Now we all listen attentively to those beautiful tributes and the youth. So now let us listen to what God is saying to us here this afternoon. So just as we listen to the tributes, let us listen to what God is saying to us. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honorable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding this is man's gray hairs, untarnished life, this is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him, as he was willing among sinners, as he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. He has been carried off so that evil may not warp his understanding or treachery seduce his soul. For the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade and the whirlwind of desire corrupts a simple heart. Coming to perfection in so short a while he achieved long life. His soul been pleasing to the Lord. He has been taken, he has taken him quickly from the wickedness around him. Yet people look on, uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy awaits the chosen of the Lord and the protection, his holy ones. The word of the Lord.
from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 3 to 4 and 8 to 9. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. Both we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. The word of the Lord. Come, you whom my Father has blessed, says the Lord. Take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Alle, alle. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle, they shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called sons of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Please be seated. You know, as an, as an old man myself, I always feel a certain sense of satisfaction when I have the funeral. We've had a lot, a lot of funerals in the last couple of months. But when it's the funeral of a person who is older than myself, because there's a sense of completion. You know, there's a sense of, well, a life lived to the full, 80 years, 90 years, whatever it is, and sense of satisfaction, completion, achievement, well done, good and faithful servant. And um, that's, 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 that's kind of natural. We, that's what we look forward to, the fulfillment, old age. It's like, I don't know, I'm sure some of you may remember, down on the road to going down towards um, Constantine School there, as on one of the bad corners, there used to be a huge silk cotton tree. And when I first saw it, that's 40 years ago, you know, I marveled at the, the size of it and the strength of it and the beauty of it. But then as the years passed, it began to degenerate. 
and it began to deteriorate. And then a branch fell off and another branch fell off. And eventually it had to be cut. But without regrets, it had fulfilled its purpose. It had been there, it had provided shade, people had passed under it, and it had fulfilled its purpose on this earth. There was no regret. It wasn't as if to say, oh, that's spoiling the environment. No, it had done its bit and countless seeds and seedlings had been spread from it throughout the countryside and, and um, as I said, no regrets. It had to go. But the funeral of a young man like this is always, is always difficult. Um, what it reminds me of, especially a sudden death like the death of Jason, you know, you're sitting in your house at night and your light is on and you're watching television and your fridge is working and you're sitting there and then suddenly the current goes. You don't know for what reason. Blackness, silence, TV gone off, no current. You don't know where is the flashlight, where is the box of matches, have I a candle somewhere, where is the lamp? And you feel, first of all, a bit confused, a bit frustrated, a bit angry maybe, and maybe even a little bit frightened because of the, the suddenness where everything finished. The light finished, the light went, and there's blackness. How do I cope? And you struggle, and you struggle, and you search, and you stumble about in the dark, in frustration, and maybe even in, in, in anger, until you find a box of matches, and you find a candle, and you strike one match, and you light one candle, or you find one little flashlight, and you switch it on, and you have a little light, and the light dispels the darkness, and then you have new hope. And then hopefully they fix up whatever the problem was, and the light comes back on. And then there's a sense of relief, a sense of, oh, thanks be to God, I wonder what caused it. And you go back, your television set comes back on, and the light is back on, and you hear the fridge working again, and, and life carries on. You know, it was like that, 2,000 years ago, 2,020 years ago, when the friends of Jesus and his mother, when Jesus, you know, they all hoped that he, was, that he would become the one to free the people of Israel from the Roman occupying army, that he would be the Messiah, that he would be the one bringing in the better times and freedom for everybody and salvation and Restore the kingdom of Israel to the might and the glory that it had in the days of King Solomon. And then he was arrested. And then he was, he was crucified. And he died on the cross. And they took him down. And they buried him in the tomb. And we're told there was darkness over the earth. For a number of hours there was darkness over the earth. And the despair and the frustration and probably the anger and maybe the fear of his friends and Mary his mother and John and James and Peter and the others that were so close to him. And they knew that they had, they had failed him, especially Peter who promised he'd never deny him and the others and they left him and, and there was that sense of frustration, that sense of, of, of failure. Until Sunday morning, and on Sunday morning, the light shone because they discovered that Jesus was no longer in the tomb, that he had risen, that death is not the end, that death is a transition, that he had risen from the dead, that he had overcome all the evil that had come against him, that by his goodness, by his love, by his truth, by his, his compassion for people, he had overcome all the hatred of his enemies, all the hatred of the scribes and the Pharisees that were jealous of his power and his popularity, and all those who had, who had crucified him. He had overcome it, saying, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And the light shone, and they had that new hope, that new that new hope that, yes, he suffered, he died, but he has risen again. So death, 
takes on a new meaning. The finality of death is changed. Now, it's not something final, but it's something, it's a transition. It's a transition. The, we heard in the first reading there, that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection his Holy One. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Jason has found rest. Length of days is not what makes age honorable. Number of years is not the true measure of life. Understanding this is man's gray hairs, untarnished life. This is ripe old age. So if understanding and untarnished life is ripe old age, then Jason has lived a full life. And yes, there is grief and there is pain and there is frustration at his passing. But the light is there at the end of the tunnel. The light is there, the light of our faith that tells us that yes, Jesus has risen from the dead. Yes, death is not the end of everything. Yes, we have hope. We do live in hope of the fullness of life, of an eternity of happiness and of joy. So, you know, we, we, um, we think, well, let me come to the gospel. In fact, I'm, I'm jumping forward a bit. I want to come back to where we were. But, now let me, let me back up. A young man as Jason, 43 years old, and we have so many young men in the church this afternoon, his classmates, and even our parliamentary representative, a young man. And, you know, Young men generally feel a sense of strength. I can't speak as a young man, but I know when I was younger, and even still sometimes I feel, well, I'm strong. I have good health, thank God. But we forget that we are fragile. You know, in the Gospel reading, Jesus said, happy are the gentle. Happy are the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Strength is not in muscles or bodybuilding or being able to lift heavy weights or being able to, to exercise a lot of influence. Strength is not to be found in, in roughness. There's great strength in gentleness. And when I see, as I saw a few minutes ago, a young man carrying a little, little child and going outside and comforting the child. There's great strength in that, in the gentleness, that gentleness, because we are fragile. And an example that I like to give of that is, you know, I'm sure, I know, if I went into any of your homes and into the sitting room, I'm sure I would see some very lovely things some nice ceramic ornaments, you know, and glassware and whatever. And those things are fragile, and they are very expensive. And when you come to clean them, you take this thing out very carefully and very gently. And you clean it very gently, and you put it back in its place very carefully and very gently. Because it's fragile, it's easily broken and damaged, and it's expensive. Well, nothing is more fragile and nothing is more expensive. Nothing is more valuable, I shouldn't say expensive, valuable in the eyes of God than a human being. And yes, we can think of a little baby and a little child as being fragile. But big young men, you are fragile too. And big young ladies, you are fragile. We are all fragile. And we are easily damaged. And we can be damaged by words. And we can be damaged by being ignored. And we can be damaged in so many ways. By being made fun of, by being belittled, by being put down. It's so easy to damage a human being. And we are all very, very fragile. 
But nothing is more precious in God's eyes than a human being. And what I wanted to say, what I wanted to really finish up with, I'm coming to now, is that, you know, fragile as we are, and especially men, we need to take care of ourselves and of each other. And this morning I brought Holy Communion to the elderly in Willis. And yesterday I brought Holy Communion to the, the people who are confined to their homes in, in Vendome and in La Mode. And on Tuesday here at the community in Bolio. And if you add all, up all of them, that's, more than, that's about 30 people. And how many of them are ladies and how many of them are men? Only three of them are men. Only three of them are men. So what's happening to men that they're not living? The ladies all in their late 80s, their 90s, and surviving. And the thing is that men don't feel, they don't feel the need for gentleness with themselves. And I was going to say, look after your physical health, your mental health, and your spiritual health. But let me reverse the order and say the most important of all is spiritual health. And what is that? You know, we heard about Jason liked to read his Bible and Jason was, you know, behaved very good. Your spiritual health really is, is your relationship with God and with Jesus Christ. Your spiritual health is having freedom from guilt and shame for not having to go about feeling I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not living up, I'm failing, I'm doing bad, a feeling that, you know, that I'm not good, that having that feeling of somehow not matching up to what God wants. But God loves you, God loves me as much, as, and he loves each man here, old and young, as much as he loves the littlest child. And God wants you to be in that, that healthy, happy relationship with you, with him. Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it to the full. He doesn't want us having a life that is, that, is, that is frustrated by shame or by guilt or by, you know, feeling that we're, we're not, not matching up to what's expected, that we're indulging in, in habits or in whatever it is that, 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 that sour our relationship with God and perhaps with our families and our neighbors too and prevent us from worshiping God and talking to God in prayer with confidence and listening to God's word and, and saying, Lord, what are you telling me there? That doesn't make sense in my life. And thinking about it and working it out. So your spiritual health, our spiritual health, all of us, but men and young men especially, take care of your spiritual health and don't be ashamed. And, and then we come to mental health. And mental health, you know, the most delicate part of our humanity is our mind. And the mind is so easily upset and disturbed and made to malfunction. And we can all, all of us, each and every one of us suffers stress and, and, and difficulties and challenges. But mental health, like physical health, it needs to be attended to. And if we ignore problems that we have, and if we just keep quiet, and we just ignore and say, it'll go away and I'll get over it and I don't have to talk, it's only going to get worse. And you only have to go to the mental hospital to see. And then, of course, if that is aggravated by substance abuse, then, of course, that makes it far, far worse. So attend to your spiritual health and attend to your mental health. There is no shame in going to somebody and saying, look, there's something I have to talk about. There's something I have to get out. And thanks be to God in the community. We have people, good people, counselors, and not only qualified people, but people who can sit down and listen, and listen in confidence. We heard that Jason could do that, that what he heard in confidence, he kept it in confidence. Be able to do that and can reach out to each other and hear each other's problems without spreading it all over the community. And being able to, you know, there's, there's a very close relationship between the two words, hearing and healing. 
There's only one lit letter in the difference, R and L. Because if somebody, if you have a problem and you are able to talk about it to somebody who can hear it, not somebody who'll say, oh yeah, 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 I can't be bothered, but somebody who'll really sit down and listen and hear what you have to say, there is healing in that. You will feel better for that. So reaching out to each other with hearing and bringing that healing. And then, of course, there is the physical. And again, we all, we're human beings. Our bodies are not made of iron. We hear about Iron Man and Superman. We're not. We're human beings and our bodies need attention too. And if we don't pay attention to them, they're going to give us trouble. So we learn something, try to learn something from our coming here this afternoon from reflecting on the, on the, the, reflecting first on the life of Jason. And we heard so much about it in the eulogy and in the, and in the other tributes. And reflecting on the word of God. And you know, I shouldn't pass on without going back over that gospel. Because it contradicts, it contradicts the ideology that we live in today. Because where is happiness to be found? The world we live in today tells us that happiness is to be found in plenty money. Win the lottery and you'll be happy. What is it? They have something now, double your, not match your, multiply, whatever it is. And you get, instead of getting $240, you get 2000 I don't know. But Jesus says no. He says happy are the poor in spirit. And poor in spirit is not destitute. Poor in spirit is not going hungry because you can't buy a loaf of bread. Poor in spirit means realizing that what you have, whether it's much or whether it is little, is entrusted to you by God. And to, you accept it with gratitude, realizing that it's a gift from God. And you appreciate it. And you break it and share it. As Jesus did with the five loaves and the two fish, Break and share with those who don't have. And you find happiness in that. And he said, happy are the gentle. I've spoken about that already. And he said, happy are those who mourn. So how can you be happy if you're mourning? If you're mourning, how can you be happy? Well, you know, if you didn't mourn, and if you didn't feel sad, it would mean you didn't love Jason. Your mourning is a sign, and your grief is evidence of your love that you had for Jason, and Jason had for you. And let me say a little word about that, because, you know, we all talk, we talk about faith, and we all have to have faith. You have to have faith. We have faith in doctors, and we have faith in lawyers, and, you know, you go to the doctor, and you... You, 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 um, you, you, you pay him and you trust that the advice he's going to give you and that the medication and the whatever it is, the procedures, are going to help you. You have faith in the doctor. And you go to the lawyer and you, you put your money there and you, and you tell him your troubles and your problems and you trust, you have faith that he's going to help you. Or you bring your little children to the school, your most precious possession, and you trust the teachers are going to take care of them. So we have to have faith. And we have to have faith in God. Because without faith in God, where are we going? What are we doing? If we trust that there is a God who created us, put us here on the earth, a God who loves us, a God who became one of us in the person of Jesus Christ, a God who wants us to have the fullness of life, and if you have faith in that God, then trust him, just as you would trust the lawyer or the doctor with your money or with your life. So we have faith. But the time will come when you will see God face to face, as it came for Jason. And you don't need faith anymore because you're with God then. You don't have to say, well, you know, I believe I will be with God because you're with God. So faith comes to an end. And we can't live without hope. To live without hope would be hopeless. And we couldn't continue. 
But a time comes, and I'm sure it has come for Jason already, when he, his, his hopes of happiness have been fulfilled, when in the happiness of being with God in heaven, our deepest and our wildest hopes are fulfilled. So we have faith and we have hope, and then we have love. And I'm not talking about sentiment or emotion or feeling. I'm talking about the love that gets up in the morning and goes to work and pays the bills, the utilities, the love that reaches out to, to family members to see that they're well taken care of, the love that, you know, that's practical and down to earth and that's expressed in, in the daily living and the actual practice of care and concern for each other. And there's love. And what I want to say to you, all of you, his family members, is that love doesn't end. Faith ends, hope ends, but love does not end. And the love that you had for Jason, that continues. And the love that Jason has for you, that continues. And you will be united with him. He won't come back to you, but we will go and join him. And he said, happy the merciful. You know, not those who keep vengeance in their hearts or refuse to forgive. Because refusal to forgive means that we keep something rotten inside, something that hurts, something that is not good, something that is like a cancer inside. And if we can excise that, if we can get rid of that and get, let that go and show mercy and show love, then, then yes, we experience the happiness that God wants us to have. And he said, happy the peacemakers. Not those who like to keep war and make trouble and, and rejoice in confusion. And then he said something very, very strange. And I think this is also relevant on this occasion. He said, happy are those who are persecuted in the cause of right. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And he said, happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. He said, rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. And that's a fact. You see, we all have to suffer at some stage. At some stage, somebody will criticize you. Some they may have life and have it to the full. So reflect on the life of Jason, the 43 years. Reflect on the word of God that you have listened to, what God has said. And then reflect on your own life. Where are you going? What is your relationship with God? What is the state of your health, your spiritual health, your mental health, and your physical health? And know that God doesn't want you to suffer ill health in any of those three areas. He wants you to have that fullness of life. He wants you to have a life of joy and of fulfillment. To achieve the fulfillment, whether in a shorter time or a longer time, the fulfillment of having lived a good life. And going before God, whether suddenly, like Jason, or after a long illness, going before God, not with fear, not with trembling, not with not with, with, with fretting and, and, and anticipation, but going before God with joy and gladness, like coming home, like reaching home after being away for some time and being happy with our Father in heaven for all eternity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you all to stand now for the prayers of intercession.
confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to His. In baptism, Jason received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy. Our brother Jason was nourished by the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly country. Lord, in your mercy. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting hope with your son. Lord, in your mercy. Many people die by fire, by violence, by war, and by famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love, and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. The family and the friends of Jason seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain, Lord, and dispel the darkness and the doubt that comes from grief. Lord, in your mercy. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Jason. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated now as we sing our collection again. And there are two baskets here at the front. I invite you to write a note to place your contribution in the basket. That would be very, very much appreciated. But I prepare the gifts for the mass, the bread and wine, and the honor of the body and the of Christ.
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Jesus, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
giving thanks that you are held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body of Christ and the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Pride Martin our Bishop, and Holy Church. Remember your servant Jason, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Jason may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please remain standing now for the final condemnation. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again, and the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. I invite you to respond to each verse of this farewell anthem. Receive his soul and present to the God the most high. Receive his soul and present to the Lord. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet the angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present to the Lord. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present to the Lord. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Jason with the sure and certain hope that, together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Jason in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith, until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever and ever. Amen. Jason, may saints and angels lead you on, escorting you where Christ has gone. Now he has called you, come to him, who sits above the seraphim. Come to the peace of Abraham. And to the supper of the Lamb. Come to the glory of the blessed and to perpetual light and rest. In peace now and with respect and reverence, let us take the body of our brother to his final blessing.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our brother Jason has rising again. Where's that mic? Give me that mic again. The mic. Our brother Jason has gone to his God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. <clears throat> we read in sacred scripture, Our true home is in heaven. And Jesus Christ, whose return we long for, will come from heaven to save us. 
And we now bless the tomb. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you made holy the graves of all who believe in you. And so you made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our brother may sleep here in peace until you awaken him to glory. For you are the resurrection and the life. Then he will see you face to face and in your light will see light and know the splendor of God. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. I can go down now. Because God has chosen to call our brother Jason from this world to himself, we commit his body to the earth, for we are dust, and to dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Dear friends, in reverence let us pray to God, the source of all mercies. You raise the dead to life, give our brother eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Jason and dry the tears of those who weep. Lord, hear us. Listen. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who are buried in this cemetery. May their sufferings be lessened. May their joys be increased. May the light of glory shine on them and may they rest in peace. Lord, hear us. And now with longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Loving God, from whom all life proceeds, and by whose hand the dead are raised again, though we are sinners, you wish always to hear us. Accept the prayers we offer for your servant Jason. Deliver his soul from death. Number him among the saints and clothe him with the robe of salvation to enjoy forever the delights of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful you are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May the prayers of Mary, the mother of God, who stood by the cross as her son was dying, help those who mourn for Jason and accompany all of us in our time of need. Remember, man, that thou art dust, and unto dust thou shalt return. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Now the first glorious mystery of the Most Holy Rosary, the resurrection. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead not into temptation. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Now can we have some music now, please, brothers?